Good morning. Um, here we are. Let's just set up. New section. We're wrapping up Chapter 9. We have two sections uh, to deal in uh, Chapter 9. Um, what are the numbers of the chapters? I think it's 9.8 and 9.9. .9. Yes, that is correct. Let me just get back over here. Um, so first we'll deal with 9.8 right now. Um, 9.8 is an introduction to probability theory. We've already talked about this a bit, so this is not a very long section. Um, and I think a lot of the ideas in here we've already seen. Probability, B-I-L-I-T-Y. There we go. Um, so, um, first of all, let's consider the idea um, that we are going to perform some sort of experiment. In fact, why don't we suppose that we're going to flip two coins. So we're going to flip two coins, and um, we're going to express the outcome as an ordered tuple that will look like that. So we come over here and we have this thing called a sample space. And what a sample space is, is, is it, it is a counting of all of the possibilities that could occur from flipping this two coin. So we're going to have sample space S, and this could actually be made up of head, head, or it could be head, tail. So that is what our sample space looks like. And then what's going to happen is, is we're going to talk about events. And for this discussion, we want to assume that there are two events. There's an event A, and there's also an event B. And we're going to say that events are either subsets or elements of S. Actually, it would be better just to say that they're subsets, and it's a possibility that it could be a subset of one. So for example, A could be the event that the first flip, first flip was heads. So A would actually be equal to head, head, and head tails. And we note that that is a subset. We could come over here and we could say let B be the event that the second flip was tails. So B could be the event head, tail, comma, tail, tail. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to say here um, when it comes to dealing with probabilities and defining probabilities and events and stuff like that. We will say that um, for any event A, that the probability of A has to be between 0 and 1. Okay, we will say that the probability of the null set is equal to 0, and we will say that the probability of the entire sample space is equal to 1. A couple of other things here. We will say that if A intersection B is equal to the empty set, okay, now we're talking about two events here, that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And you'll note that this over here actually is a very similar statement to what we had about sets and subsets when we wanted to add the sizes of sets together. Um, here's another interesting, I guess we could call this a corollary, okay, if 
AC, if that's equal to the complement of A, Okay, remember what that means. That means whatever event A is, then this is all of the events that are not A. Okay, well, then remember the following, that A union, A complement, that's going to equal the entire sample space S. And we also know that A intersection, A complement, is the empty set. So using these previous two facts over here, we know that the probability of A union A complement, well that's equal to the probability of S and that's equal to 1, okay? But also by what we said over here, because the intersection of these two sets is empty, this is also equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A complement, okay? So we have that the probability of A plus the probability of A complement is equal to 1. Well, that tells us that the probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. And this is a very important and a very useful fact. We'll use that in a second. Let's look at a couple other things here. Let's consider some experiments. So suppose I have a die and we know a die has six sides to it, all the way up to something that looks like this. My die is not very square there, and if you'll allow me, I'll just refer to that as all the way up to six. And we know that if it's a fair die, that the probability of 1 is equal to the probability of 2 is equal to all the way up to the probability of 6 is equal to the constant. In other words, by fair, we mean that the probability of any one of these outcomes is equally likely. So that would just say that C plus C plus all the way up to the year, I've got six of these, is equal to 1 or I get that 6C is equal to 1, or C is equal to 1 sixth. No surprises there. Let's consider the following. Why don't I let A be the event that I roll an even number? And why don't I let B equal the event that I roll a number that's greater than or equal to 4. So then the question is, is, is what is P of A union B? Well, that's equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. Now, A would actually be equal to the event if I rolled an even number, it's going to be either a 2, a 4, or a 6. And the B, I roll a number greater than or equal to 4, so B is going to equal 4, 5, or 6. Okay, and um, we know that P of A is just going to equal P of A, and this goes back to something that we talked back a few sections ago, that's going to be the size of A over the size of S. Well, that's equal to 3 over 6, and that's 1 half. And we know that P of B is going to equal the size of B over the size of S. And again, that's also equal to 1 half. And then the question is, is, what can we say about P of A intersection B? Well, the first question is, is that would be the probability of, what is the intersection of these two sets here? Well, we can see that that's the probability of 4 and 6 
okay and we could say well that is the size of the set 4 comma 6 over the size of the sample space and that's just equal to 2 over 6 is equal to 1 third okay so if we want to I'm running out of space here the probability of a union B that's P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B that's equal to one half plus one half minus one third well one half plus one half is one minus one third that's equal to two thirds okay let's consider another example so I am going to pick a card from a deck of 52 cards And I ask the following question. What is the probability that it's either a face card or a red card? So what I'm going to do over here is, is I'm going to let A equal face card. I'm going to let B equal a red card. So what's going to happen over here is, is this could either be a jack, a queen, or a king. I'll write lowercase heart. It could be a jack, queen, king of spades. It could be a jack, queen, king of diamonds or it could be a jack a queen or a king of clubs and of course i would need to separate these because these are sets so the first thing that we note here is is we ask well how big is that set and we note that that set has 12 elements in it so the first thing we note is is that the probability of a is equal to 12 over 52. Okay, now the red cards, I'm not going to sit here and list them. I think you all know why. Um, basically because there are 13 hearts, and then there are also 13 diamonds. So there are a total of 26 cards there. So the probability of B, of picking a red card, that's going to be 26 over 52, which is one half. Now, if I want to figure out what is the probability of a face card or a red card, remember that's going to equal, that's going to be P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. So what I need to do here is, is I need to first find P of A intersection B. And that's not too hard to do. We've really kind of done all the work for it up here. So P of A intersection B is asking, um, what is the probability that I had a red face card? Okay. And the red face cards we recognize are the hearts, and they are also the diamonds. So I see that there are six of these. So that's equal to 6 over 52. And now I can go ahead and I can answer this question. The probability of A over here is 12 over 52. The probability of B is 26 over 52. And I am going to subtract the probability that it is a face card and red. And that's going to be 6 over 52. And let's see, 26 plus 12 is 38, minus 6 is 32. So this is 32 over 52.
And that is our answer. Okay, to finish up this chapter, we have to talk about something called the expected value. <clears throat> very, very simple idea. Um, suppose we have a sample space S and suppose S is made up of, suppose S is finite. So there could be event one, there could be event two, there could be event three, all the way up to event K. And so remember, these are the possible outcomes. And let's assign a probability to each one of these. So I want to suppose that the probability of E1 is equal to, why don't we make it a little P1, and the probability of E2 is equal to that, all the way up to the probability of EK is equal to some little k. So remember, first of all, um, we note that the sum over the i's of the p sub i's, p1 plus p2 plus all the way up to p sub k, by definition, that has to sum up to 1. Okay? Well, the expected value This is just equal to the summation over i of pi e to the i. So that's equal to p1 times e1 plus p2 times e2 plus all the way up to p sub k e to the k. Um, in a lot of ways, you could almost think of this, this is very similar to calculating an average. And I'll put it in quotes, because it's not always exactly the same, but it could be very close. Let's consider an example here. Suppose I'm going to roll a die. Okay, so we know that if we roll a die, that's supposed to be a 1 a 2, 2, 3, all the way up to 3, 4, 5, 6. And what I want to do here is I'm just going to call that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is S. That's equal to, the, to that. Let's just draw a line here to separate our thoughts a little bit. Okay, so first of all, I, let's assume it's a fair die. So if it is a fair die, we know that the probability of 1 is equal to all the way, they're all equal across the board, and it's equal to 1 sixth. So the expected value Well, that's going to be equal to 1 times 1 sixth plus 2 times 1 sixth plus 3 times 1 sixth plus 4 times 1 sixth plus 5 times 1 sixth plus 6 times 1 sixth. And that would be equal to 1 sixth times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. And that's equal to 1 sixth times, well, that is going to be 21. If I add those all up, 21 over 6 is equal to 3 and a half. So the expected value of rolling a die is 3 and a half, which if we came over here and this was die number 4, the expected value is somewhere right in the middle. And in fact, in this case, you can see it's actually an average of these six numbers right here. But let's consider another example here. Suppose I have another die, and suppose it's not a fair die. So why don't I assume that p of 1 is equal to 0.1, and p of 2 is equal to 0.1. Why don't I have p of 3 is equal to 0.05, p of 4 is equal to 0.05, P of 5 is equal to 0.05. And then we will know that P of 6 
Well, this is point 0.1 plus point 0.1 is point 0.2. This would be point 0.3. This would be point 0.35. So this would have to be point 0.65 so that the summations of the probabilities would all add up to 1. So what is the expected value? Well, in this case, it would be 1 times 0.1 plus 2 times 0.1 plus 3 times 0.05 plus 4 times 0.05 plus 5 times 0.05 plus 6 times 0.65. All right, so that is equal to 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.15 plus 0.20 plus 0.25 and this over here would be um, this would be equal to um, let's see I have to go 0 carry through 3.90 okay well what's that equal to that's 3.90 that would get me up to 4.15, 4.35, that would get me up to 4.5, 4.8. Okay, so the expected value here is different. Okay, in the fair case it was 3.5. We can see over here it went to 4.8. And we can see that this number over here is kind of closer to this number here, which seems to be kind of the loaded number, the number that's very much skewed, okay? Um, but let's consider just one more example, and this is right in your book. This one's kind of interesting, and your author says, let's suppose that we have a lottery, um, and we're going to sell, we're going to sell 500,000 five dollar tickets and there's going to be one winner and there's going to be one winner that's going to win a million dollars and let me see what the other numbers are here there's going to be one there are going to be ten that win a thousand dollars that's the second place prize. The third place prize, and there'll be a thousand of those. Those are going to win $500. And then there's going to be a fourth place prize where there'll be 10,000 people, and they are each going to win $10. So the question is, is, is what is the expected value of this? Now, the first thing to realize here is, is let's see, we've got 10,000 plus 1,000 plus 10 plus 1. That means over here there are a total of 11,000 and 11 winners over here. But you have to remember, if there are 11,000 and 11 winners, then that means there are 500,000 minus 11,000 and 11. And that is equal to, I've got to figure that number out here. Let's see, 500,000 minus 11,000, that would be 489,000. 489,000, and then we have to subtract 11 there. So that is going to be 488,989. Um, Okay, so we have, these are the numbers that we have here, and the question that we really want to ask here is, is, what is the expected payoff for anybody that buys a ticket? And the calculation for that is going to go something like the following. Well, there are one of these, so what's going to happen over here is, is it has a probability of winning of 1 over 500,000. Okay, and the payoff here is going to be a million dollars minus the five dollars that that person spent on the ticket. Likewise, over here, there are going to be 10 winners, so we have to go, we're going to actually have 10 terms that look like this, but each one of them 
has a probability of winning 1 over 500,000 times. And the payoff here is going to be 1,000 minus 5. Over here, there are going to be 1,000 winners. Each one has a probability of winning 1 over 500,000. And the payoff here is going to be 500 minus 5. And finally, down here, we're going to have 10,000 where each one of them has a probability of winning 1 over 500,000. Okay, and the expected payoff, they win 10, but it costs them $5 to do that. Likewise, what's going to happen over here with these people that lost, we have to make sure to include them too. Now, there are going to be 488,989 of these. Each one of these has a probability of 1 over 500,000. Okay, but they've just lost $5. Okay, so the expected value here Okay, notice every one of these terms has a 1 over 500,000, so I'm just going to carry that to the outside. I've got 1 over 500,000, and that's going to be times, okay, and what's going to happen over here is I am going to have a million minus 5, okay, and over here it's going to be plus 10 times a thousand minus five plus and over here it's going to be a thousand times five hundred minus five over here it's going to be ten thousand times ten minus five okay and then what's going to happen over here is this it's going to be plus 488, okay, 989 times minus 5. And if we go ahead and calculate this, um, according to the author of your book, this is equal to minus 1.78. Well, what does that mean? It means that if you continually play this lottery over and over and over again, um, you're going to occasionally make some money, but it's saying in the long run, you're going to lose on average $1.78 every time that you play. Not a good idea.